Hello, I am glad to be here today. Together, we will explore the truth concerning emotional artificial intelligence. So, let's start. During the last decades, there has been a lot of discussion concerning machine learning and artificial intelligence for emotional recognition uh, and feedback uh, in the context of many technological applications, such as e-learning, e-commerce, digital health, and many more. So building machines that take into account uh, the emotional state of a person and adjust accordingly is one of the main challenges of modern technology. So let me begin with uh, some examples uh, having to do with uh, robots. And I think that we all agree uh, that uh, when a robot sees people in front of it, it shouldn't uh, treat them as object. Uh, it uh, should have some kind of social intelligence, uh, making it take action to adjust its behavior accordingly. For instance, uh, if someone, for whatever reason, is frightened because of the robot's presence, the robot should probably move away from that person. Uh, this, of course, would require the robot being able to recognize emotion. Uh, exactly as, as humans recognize it in each other. Another uh, example comes from e-learning. So imagine a computer-aided learning system equipped with uh, an automatic recognizer of human emotion in order to collect data which can identify a student's emotional state. You see, with this information, the computer could uh, respond to students' emotional state, instead of just responding to students' commands. Uh, of course, an appropriate computer response to a student's emotional state uh, also requires evolving and integrating pedagogical models into computerized learning environments, which would assess whether learning is proceeding at a healthy rate, and if not, they would intervene appropriately. But Think of how helpful these systems are for students in under-resourced schools who have trouble learning because of lack of emotional support. Other examples include cars that can tell when a driver is too distracted or tired to drive, or cars that can measure drivers' stress levels and give them feedback in order to stay focused and keep themselves and others safe. However, there remains much fear, confusion, and, and misunderstanding concerning the field. What is the truth concerning emotional artificial intelligence? What are its, its limitations, and what is its potential use? You see, Throughout the last decades, affective neuroscience and psychology have reported that rational uh, function is tightly connected to uh, emotions, and all this together uh, play a useful role in human learning and decision making as they influence cognitive processes. To put it in another way, there is an emotional dimension to intelligence. And if we really want to produce intelligent machines, we have to integrate that emotional dimension to artificial intelligence. So, inspired by such research, the objective of many researchers has become the creation of a computing system capable of recognizing and expressing emotions thus developing an intelligent machine able to recognize and express emotions has been considered an enormous challenge for artificial intelligence researchers, and the so-called field of affective computing has come to life. So, according to Picard, Rosalind Picard is an MIT professor to whom we owe a lot. Affective computing is 
computing that relates, relates to, arises from, or deliberately influences emotions. But let us now examine how us, human beings, recognize emotions in each other. So, uh, we recognize emotional states in other people by a number of visible and audible cues. Uh, facial expression is a valuable means in the communication of emotion. And moreover, there is evidence of the existence of a number of universally recognized facial expressions of, uh, for emotions such as happiness, sadness, fear, disgust, surprise. And um, in addition, the body, gesture and posture, as well as the tone of voice are the other core channels of the communication of emotion. There are also a number of uh, psychophysiological correlates of emotion, such as pulse or respiration rate, most of which cannot be detected by humans, but they can be uh, made accessible to computers given appropriate equipment. Uh, from all these channels, researchers of uh, artificial intelligence are attempting to infer users' emotional state. However, this isn't easy. Users who are uh, aware that the computer is monitoring their emotions may modify their behavior. And notably, not all human signals are transmitted subconsciously. Uh, in fact, it is very common for humans to purposely send emotional expressions which do not necessarily reflect their inner state. It is hence also possible that users will learn to use emotional expressions in their interactions with computers if they see a benefit in doing so. Uh, for example, let's imagine again an intelligent car and uh, some drivers could be stupid enough to pretend that, I, uh, that they are in a good shape for driving while, while they are not and succeed in making the car believe them. Nevertheless, subjective and physiological measures do not always agree, uh, which uh, indicates uh, that uh, physiological data may detect responses that users are either unconscious of or cannot recall at post-session subjective assessment. And there are other problems. The sensors might often fail and result in missing or unfavorable data, which is a common problem, resulting in a considerable reduction uh, of the performance of the pattern recognition uh, system. And there are other challenges as well, such that fear, for example, produces similar physiologic reactions to surprise, and boredom produces similar physiologic reactions to sadness, and consequently very similar physiologic uh, correlates produce very similar acoustic correlates, making again the accurate recognition of emotion a very, very difficult task. So these challenges can falsify emotional recognition and thus lead to inappropriate interactions which may take several forms. For instance, uh, if a robot is overly excited about a user's success, the user may feel awkward, uh, which may lessen uh, his her motivation uh, for continued interactions with the robot and on the task. But even if we manage to confront all these challenges concerning recognition of emotions, inappropriate interactions between human and robots may still take place there is always the risk that a machine reacts inadequately to a situation because of its failure to correctly interpret context. So what do we mean by context? So think of that example. Imagine that you are being chased by a robber or another kind of awful creature that, like that one, and somehow you manage to enter into your emotional intelligent car which, however, insists that you shouldn't be driving because you are emotionally upset. So uh, the robber reaches you and probably breaks your car and kills you. So 
Unfortunately, there are currently uh, no machine learning methods that can successfully take context into account. And even if such methods existed, should we trust them and use them? But there are other situations where emotions are involved in decision-making processes where, where inevitably someone may get hurt as a result of this decision. Think of that example. Imagine a self-driving car of the future faced with, uh, involved in a car accident in such a way that it is faced with the question, do I protect the car driver or do I protect the pedestrian in front of the car? Is it safe to give machines freedom of choice? We wouldn't want to give up our freedom of, of, of choice and accept a future where we let machines decide for us. So there is so much fear uh, about killer robots or robots taking control uh, of our world. Should such machines be recognized as part of technology dehumanizing the society? You know, there are this kind of, of fears. But the true reason for creating artificial intelligence and integrating emotional intelligence into uh, artificial intelligence is because we need to create robots and machines that provide better services to humans. In that sense, no matter how advanced models of humanoid robots, science fiction film, films present, the truth is that the question of whether robots will ever acquire consciousness and have free will, or whether robots will ever be able to really feel like humans do, this question is irrelevant. We shouldn't care about this kind of, of questions. So the challenge for robots should not be superhuman intelligence so that we can prove that robots are better than humans. The challenge is how to make machines work effectively with humans. The challenge is how to make machines facilitate human decision making. The challenge is not to have machines taking important decisions instead of humans. So, let me make clear that there is nothing that can be considered as effective human-robot collaboration when robots are used as war machines. So, let me make clear again that there is nothing that can be considered as effective human-robot collaboration when robots are purposely used by humans to harm other humans? The truth is that all machines that will ever be made and all animals that have ever existed and will exist do not worth more than a single human life. And I'm telling this right now because even the scientific community seems to forget that truth. The truth is, no matter how much cognitive awareness a machine shows when performing an emotional behavior, artificial intelligence actually produces machines that are very large, complicated calculators with no kind of awareness or cells of self. The purpose of artificial intelligence, the purpose of integrating emotions in artificial intelligence is to make machines of all kinds to better collaborate with people for the benefit of society so as to increase, to increase human happiness. There is no such thing as robot happiness and increase human prosperity. Thank you. <laughs>